Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today I'm catching up with the CEO of Creo Medical. Creo Medical is a European med uh, surgical device company with key partnerships with leading robotic manufacturers. Welcome, Craig. Hey, how are you doing? Great, thanks. So uh, the recent launch of Speedboat Ultra Slim, it's been a key milestone for Creo. How differentiated is, is from your other devices and what's already available in the market? And what kind of incremental benefit do you see from the recent approval? That's a great question. Uh, Ultra Slim is the culmination of many years worth of work in miniaturizing the advanced energy that we have in our technology. Speedboat is the first device in the market. Uh, so that range, that range has been in use for the last two or three years since we fully launched after the pandemic. And basically, it's a smaller device. It's as small as we believe we need to ever take it uh, in its current form. Uh, so it's more flexible. So it's accessible to every single endoscope uh, that a th therapeutic endoscopist or an endoscopist would ever need to access. So it opens up more access. Uh, it makes it easier for people to do more cases, which is great for us and great for patients. Uh, and it's also easier for people to train and learn the technology because it allows them to use smaller scopes, which are easier to handle. Uh, so overall, it's an incremental benefit in every way. Uh, there's some interesting uh, user features as well. So it's designed to enable easier single use uh, by the endoscopist. So it doesn't need as much help uh, from a, a nurse technician or nurse support. Some physicians like to have that nurse physician uh, clinical support in the room, helping them with the, the orientation of the device. And so it allows both of those. So it's, we're basically seeing it incrementally allow physicians to do more cases. And we're seeing that across uh, all of our user base, which is, uh, which is terrific. Uh, and ultimately it's the it's the only form of advanced energy where we've got dynamic feedback from the end of the device, which is making for precise resections and uh, terrific clinical outcomes. So we've got some great uh, posters and presentations this weekend at DDW, where, for example, uh, stenosis and stricturing in the esophagus when we do large resections, uh, a lot many have been done recently with Speedo Ultra, we get zero need for dilations for the patients, where in some cases, using the current monopolar technology, uh, patients have to come back for sometimes 30 endoscopies for specific repeat dilations to open up the esophagus as it heals. So it's really talking to the power of advanced energy in, in surgery and um, and it's truly novel in this, in, in this particular sector. So we're super excited about it. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's also nice to see the positive health economic data from the NHS supply chain. Can you briefly recap the key takeaways and how can it uh, potentially influence the uptake of speedboat in the UK? So uh, that's an independent analysis of our data or some of the data from some patients that we've obviously had treated with speedboat. Uh, so over 130 cases, we saved that particular trust close to 700,000 pounds, nearly a million dollars. I mean, that's incredible for just 130 patients. And that saving is coming about with reduced procedure times, it's redu reducing the accommodation costs for having to look after patients for less time in the hospital. You know, almost a 100% reduction in critical care costs because we're removing the need in most of those cases for patients to uh, have something which their alternative would have been surgical procedures, which meant long-term stay in hospital with all the care that goes with that. So that's a 5,000 plus saving just in that kind of episode uh, in cash terms for the trust, which we're seeing that manifest itself in a number of sites across the UK where we're shortening waiting times uh, and as well as reducing the, the overall cost of the service. So it's obviously a great benefit in terms of it's the, the independent kind of review of that by NHS supply chain. We were one of only, uh, only 12 products that they selected out of all of the products that they managed into the NHS uh, for this exercise. And we've delivered some terrific results. So it's obviously making now some of our customers are going to the NHS and their commissioners for um, the, to, to acquire the system, not just on clinical grounds, but they're able to now make a case for this is a cost saving exercise. This is an exercise in saving the NHS cost and reducing waiting times, in addition to the terrific benefits we're getting for patients. So uh, it's it's great news all around and hopefully we think it should support. Um, don't forget we announced last year that we've been selected for routing and guidance by NICE for NICE guidelines. So uh, NICE are doing their work and this is obviously going to be an important part of that. So we're super excited about that as well. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, you, you have a couple of other advanced energy device sets for commercial launch in 2024. 
Can you provide some background on these devices and their commercial potential? Uh, so if we talk about SpiderBlade first, SpiderBlade is uh, a, a derivative of the speedboat technology, again, using uh, super high frequency microwave energy, the highest frequency of uh, microwave te technology used in all forms of surgery and health there, as far as we can tell. Uh, so it provides for that great su surgical reception uh, where you can cut through tissue, you can seal blood vessels, you can resect tissue with the device open. It has all of the features of some of the most advanced laparoscopic tools, but at the end of a flexible endoscope. So it's really opening up that third space endoscopy is what endoscopy uh, endoscopists are talking about. So allowing them to do a whole range of different procedures, uh, particularly in the upper GI where four gut surgeons have been starting to do surgery that otherwise would be done through open surgery for bariatric patients who have really low tolerance to open surgery. They can do these things with uh, surgical tools like speedboat, uh, spider blade, as well as speedboat. Uh, so we're really excited to see that into the market towards the end of this year, uh, depending on how long it takes to go through the RFDA submission, uh, but certainly towards the end of this year into Q Q1 next year will be launched uh, in the EU or in the US. And then the other devices that we're working on are microwave. So those only use a microwave uh, frequency lab, super high frequency microwave for the ablation of precancerous and early cancerous tissue. Uh, so we've done a number of cases in the pancreas already with microblade fine, which is the very fine needle derivative of microblade. And we recently announced the first um, lung ablation cases, which was done robotically recently as well, which was um, you know, really exciting kind of milestones, part of the partnership that we have with, uh, with some of our partners. And um, it really opens up the future of lung cancer screening, which uh, we know is going to come. It's not currently a population-based screening, uh, but increasing screening will only start to reduce the, um, you know, the mortality rate for lung cancer, which is obviously, as we all know, the most uh, has the highest mortality, the highest incidence, and um, and it doesn't have any screening because the treatment isn't there yet. Whereas with this kind of technology, we're able to treat things very precisely at a very early stage in the disease. Uh, and hopefully we'll start reducing mortality rates in the next few years on the back of screening with, with products like Ion by Intuitive. Yeah, you've also actually had really strong growth in the consumable business. And how much of that growth was contributed to non-European markets? And what are your future plans for expansion? So we, uh, as most people know, we acquired a business called Albin Medical in 2020, uh, and we did that to acquire access to direct sales resource across Germany, Spain, France, the UK, Belgium. Uh, and that's been a terrific success for us. We've been able to integrate the products into our portfolio. So all, nearly, oh, sorry, in excess of 80% of our products now that we sell, including through that business is branded box Creo Medical products. And that's helping us uh, improve the brand awareness. So we're growing the business nicely in France, Germany, uh, particularly in the UK. Uh, so we're getting single, you know, high single digit, almost 10% growth in that business. But we've also launched those products uh, in the last 12 months into the US market branded as Creo. And we're also expanding now into the Latin American markets through, that, through the American business. So we've seen incremental revenues come through in 2023. Um, you know, it's not a massive growth driver in the number for 23, but we do see significant growth coming through as a result of uh, the work we've been doing with that consumer business in 24. So, so you actually have uh, very promising partnerships with the leading uh, robotic manufacturers, which I kind of uh, mentioned early on, Intuit Surgical and CMR. And you've recently reported the first robotic assisted surgical procedure with Microblade Flex. When, when can we expect commercial launches under these collaborations? Uh, so with the partnership with Intuitive that we announced um, probably about two years ago now, approaching two years ago, uh, that's been about um, de developing compatibility uh, with the Intuitive Ion system, which is their uh, pulmonary access um, underluminal system. They have great success with that product in terms of increasing the diagnostic yield and the diagno diagnostic acts. Um, accuracy with uh, these small lesions that are being targeted uh, in the lung. So they've recently started rolling that across Europe. At the same time, we launched our clinical study last year, which we announced in 2023 for the ablation of small nodules in the lung, because that's what the ultimate goal is for the product, is to not uh, ablate things early in the staging of the disease, stage one, one B type uh, patients ultimately. Uh, and obviously now we've done the first first few cases now with um, with ION. Um, so that's you know, the first robotically assisted ablation program that we know of, uh, which is a terrific kind of milestone. But it's still early days. We've only got 
a relatively small number of patients, as we did with space Speedboat, we need to be super careful and diligent about how we approach the post-market clinical data that we need to achieve. And once we get to a certain volume of patients and you know, both we and our partners are happy with the, the quality of the clinical data and the safety case, which is the most important, uh, it's at that stage that we'd start rolling into you know, early stages of commercialization. It's difficult to say exactly when that will be, uh, but we're, we're rapidly approaching it, which is, uh, again, the whole team is super excited. We're all working hard towards it figuring out the details as we go with our partners. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to the next kind of 12, 18 months. That's going to be a, uh, yeah, some really exciting stuff happening, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can sum up all, all these things, I mean, you have a lot going on. What are the key catalysts and milestones investors should look for in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah. So I think in, as to where we are today, when we went, when we took the company public at the end of 2016, early 2017, we had a, a big idea and a lot of prototypes. We didn't have anything that was even remotely clinically cleared in the market. Since then, we've cleared our products. Uh, we su survived the pandemic, which put a two-year hole in our commercialization program. We've come out the other side. We're seeing two and a half times growth in our core Creo products. And all of those prototypes that we brought to the market and to our shareholders uh, back in 2017, who we're immensely grateful for their support over the last few years, we're now at the point of crystallizing revenues now already or will be very soon with, with all of those brands. And I think that's, that drives the key milestones that we will be seeing coming out of the business over the next few years. That's all our core focus has been, those products. We sound like we've got a lot going on, but we've chosen the best partners in the world. Or they've worked with us on the pulmonary side. The rest of it is just core focus on our core business uh, as, as we develop these brands. So the milestones would be associated with increasing kind of clinical outcomes, progress with our clinical partners, particularly with intuitive and CMR. Uh, and then there should be the relentless uh, milestones associated with putting these products into the market. So launches and new products towards the end of the year um, and milestones with you know, entering new markets and, and some other partnerships that we might be looking at doing as well. So there's going to be a lot coming up and um, we've just got to keep on keeping on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. Thank you for the update, Craig. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Creo Medical, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.